I am Mariana, and I am 40 years old. I work as a medical assistant. I have been married for 12 years now, and I have a son who is a third grader and a daughter who is a first grader. John, my husband, came to my hospital often to do his sales. Every time John would come to my hospital for his sales, I was the one who handled him. At first, we were on the basis of having just small talks, but then, when we found out that we had mutual friends, we got along. After having dinner together several times, we started dating. And after three years of dating, we got married. John is very bright, well-spoken, and great at communicating. He even frequently says it himself that working in sales was his calling. To be honest, John was not my type in terms of physical outlooks, but as we talked, I somehow fell in love with him. It has been 15 years since we met, but even after the kids are in bed asleep, I enjoy talking with John so much that every time we talk, several hours just passes in a blink. Our two children, Patrick and Katie, have grown up very well, and perhaps because they are like my husband, they both talk a lot, so every day is very lively. I think we are a typical family. John is also very active with doing household chores. Tonight's dinner is steak. Do look forward to it. John sometimes declares to us in the morning what he will be cooking for dinner. And when he does, Patrick and Katie will willingly go to school with great joy. John wasn't a cook from the beginning. He could not cook at all when we first met. But before I knew it, his cooking repertoire had grown and I was amazed. The reason why my husband is cooking dinner is because I am not able to be home much. My mother is in the hospital and I visit her every day after work. At first, I would come home early to prepare dinner. But one day, John said, I'll cook dinner and leave the kids to me. Don't worry about the family. I'll take care so you go visit and stay with your mother. I was so happy that I cried to hear his kind words. From that day, I would try and finish preparing breakfast and do much household chores I can before work and seeing the children off to school and leave for work. My husband would come back home from work and prepare dinner and took care of the children and watch over their homework in the evening. My mother has had a chronic illness for a long time and has been repeatedly in and out of the hospital for the past three years. She has not been doing so well lately and she has been in the hospital for a long time now. To be honest, I don't know what will happen in the near future, so I go visit and see her every day to calm myself down from my anxieties. I lost my father in an accident when I was very young. Since I was an only child, I have only lived with my mother till marrying John. My mother was a very smart person and worked in the same medical office as me. But she started investing in stocks with the inheritance of my father and was earning quite a bit of extra income. My mother bought an apartment when I was going to elementary school. It was a large apartment, more than enough for two people, in a fairly convenient location and probably expensive when I think about it now. Thanks to my mother, I was able to attend private high school and private college, and she raised me without any troubles or any inconvenience. When my mother was temporarily discharged from the hospital, I repeatedly told her that I wanted to live with her, but she shook her head no, perhaps out of concern for us. She would say, It's okay. You worry too much. I was better than you think, Mariana. She would answer me this every time I asked her to stay with us. Fortunately, my mother was able to manage to perform daily activities by herself and did not need any nursing care. However, I was still anxious about it and went to see her every day even while she was discharged from the hospital. Since I have to work, I can only visit her at night on weekdays, so I have my aunt visit my mother during the day. 
My aunt, Michelle, is single and has been running a small restaurant since before I was born. Since I was a little girl, I sometimes went to eat dinner with my mother at my aunt Michelle's restaurant, and when my mother was away at work, aunt Michelle used to play with me and take care of me. When I was in my rebellious phase, I would fight with my mother, and I would run away to aunt Michelle's place to calm down. I remember well that when Aunt Michelle and I talked over the food she cooked, I would forget what I was angry about. So, I believe that I was raised by my mother and Aunt Michelle. All the food is delicious, and some of her regular customers have been coming here since I was a little girl. Even after I got married, my family often went to eat at Aunt Michelle's restaurant. Then one day, that day, I went to visit my mother until just before visiting hours and returned home. It was quite late, but I found my mother-in-law was still at our place. The children were still awake and the four of them were relaxing in the living room. Oh my, Mariana, welcome back. Were you visiting your mother at the hospital again today? You must be wary for having such a long day. My parents-in-law's house is about a five-minute drive from ours. My mother-in-law, Rachel, doesn't bully me nor pick on me, but she has a stubborn streak, which makes it harder for me to get along with her. Once she says something, she has to get things done in her way and be stubborn about it. When Rachel comes to our house like this, it is usually when she wants money. My father-in-law, Craig, still has a job and working very hard, and we're not wealthy by any means. For the past few years, Rachel has asked me to send her $500 every month as living expenses, but for the past few months, she often comes to our house to ask for additional money when she says she is in need. Today, Rachel says she came to see her grandchildren, but I think she probably wants the money. After making sure the kids are in bed asleep, Rachel said, I'm sorry, I'm short of money again this month. Can you just give me a little more? Again? This month? We have been giving you money for living expenses every month now. My father is still working, so what the hell are you spending all that money on? Don't be so angry. I'm getting old and I have to pay for the hospital. You're telling me not to go to the hospital? Your father's salary is going down because of the recession. John would nag her every time she asks for money, but Rachel would never back down. I have seen this exchange many times, but my mother-in-law makes some excuse and will never leave until we give her the money. I calmed my angry husband down and gave Rachel $200 that I had just found in my wallet. After giving her the money, my husband left to take bath, so I went to walk Rachel to the door, and she said, Thank you, Mariana. You're always so supportive. By the way, how is your mother? She asked curiously. It was the first time ever Rachel had asked me about my mother. I wondered why she would ask me such a question when she hardly ever visited her before, but I replied, Well, I guess she is still the same. The doctors have told me that this hospital stay is going to be a long one. I answered. Then my mother-in-law said, Oh, I see. What will happen to your inheritance? She asked bluntly. I was surprised at her sudden question, so I questioned her back. What? Inheritance? What do you mean? Well, I was just wondering if you already had those conversations with your mother. I believe that your mother has a sister, right? I think you should talk to your mother about this matter now before it's too late. After your mother passes away, you wouldn't want to have any trouble with your aunt about the inheritance, would you? Rachel's words made me angry and irritated, so I told her, Don't worry, my aunt and I don't have that kind of relationship that would cause trouble. I replied simply, a few weeks later, John, who had taken the children to his parents' house for the holiday, he came home in a panic. Mariana! My mother bought a mansion near your work! 
Near my workplace, a mansion was in under construction. Since we lived in the countryside, the mansion was very conspicuous. Whenever we passed by the mansion construction site, my husband and I often wondered who would live in such a place. What? Where would she get that kind of money? I asked him in surprise. I have no idea. I questioned her a lot, but she never answered. Maybe she's relying on my father's retirement money. John said this as he wondered. If Rachel doesn't have enough money to pay for the mansion, does this mean that we do not need to give her any money for her living expenses anymore? That's right. It won't make any sense because if she can afford living in that mansion, she should have enough money for her living expense. We were very angry and irritated because we had been given Rachel money thinking that she was in need. If Rachel has enough money to pay for the mansion, it would be a lie to say that she doesn't have enough money for living expenses. John and I decided that we will definitely stop giving her money no matter what she says in the future. Supposedly, her mortgage and deposit on the mansion has been approved, and the mansion will be completed in six months. Rachel told John that she was very excited about living in a mansion in her old age. One month after we had this conversation, my mother has passed away. I was quite shocked because she looked well and healthy when I went to visit her the day before. It was a blessing in disguise that I received a call while I was at work that my mother was in critical condition. So I was able to leave work early and was able to rush to the hospital to take care of her in her final hours. She may have been waiting for me to come. She passed away soon after I arrived. Maybe she was waiting for you, Mariana. Aunt Michelle, who arrived earlier, told me this while I broke down and cried on the spot. There was more to do at the wake and funeral than I had expected, and I had not much time to grieve. After seeing my mother off safely and returning home, I lost my strength and broke down in tears, and my children comforted me. After the funeral, I spent the rest of the day being very busy cleaning up my mother's house. As I was cleaning up with Aunt Michelle, I found many things with memories and by remembering them, I couldn't stop crying again. While I was being busy cleaning up, John helped me with the household chores and took care of the children for me. Since he was very busy at work too, I can't thank him enough and be grateful of him. The children were very sweet with me and cared for my feelings. Patrick tried his best to tell me funny stories from school to make me laugh, and Katie showed me that she got an A-plus on her test to make me happy. I cried a lot after my mother passed away, but John, Patrick, Kate, and Aunt Michelle took good care of me and supported me. Then, three days after the funeral, when I returned home from cleaning up my mother's house, Rachel was at our house again. As soon as she saw me back at home, Rachel abruptly said, When will you get the deposit? The payment is due soon. Deposit? Payment? What are you talking about? I asked her back. I am talking about your inheritance. You got a lot of money, didn't you? Inheritance? I renounced my inheritance. What? Are you kidding me? Rachel said this in surprise with a very loud voice, which echoed throughout the house. I found out after my mother passed away that my mother's inheritance was nearly two million dollars. My mother had told me that she wanted me and my aunt to split it 50-50. However, my mother often talked about my aunt to me. She would say, if anything should happen to me, Please take care of Michelle. I hope Michelle would renovate her restaurant with my inheritance. Oh, mother, don't say anything so ominous. We often had this kind of conversation. Even the day before she passed away, my mother was worried about my aunt's restaurant. Are there any customers coming to Michelle's restaurant? She said something about the AC breaking again, so I'm worried. Aunt Michelle's restaurant was built before I was born, so it was quite old, 
and my mother offered her many times that she would renovate the restaurant for her, but Aunt Michelle would always refuse the offer. She said she feels bad about spending my mother's money and also didn't want to take a break from running the restaurant while it was being renovated. Aunt Michelle has managed to run the restaurant, but recently the building has been deteriorating and there are many places that need to be repaired, which is costing her a lot of money. Aunt Michelle once told me that although her regulars have been coming to her restaurant for many years, she has a hard time attracting new customers, probably because of the outlook of the restaurant. Since I have been a customer of my aunt's restaurant for many, many years, I wanted her to continue to run the restaurant for as long as she can. Aunt Michelle, who has always prioritized work, spent money for the restaurant even if it means cutting her own living expenses. She lives on the second floor of the restaurant where she was living quite frugally, to the point that I would worry every time I went to visit her at her place. I believe that the purchase price for the ingredients for her restaurant's menu has gone up but she hardly raised the price of her menu she served to her customers. I have a husband and we both work. We are not wealthy by any means, but we are not in need for money. Even if I receive a large sum of money, I would have no use for it, so I wanted to renounce my inheritance and ask my aunt to inherit it all. Aunt Michelle initially refused. But when I told her that my mother had been worried about her even the day before she passed away, Aunt Michelle agreed to accept it. I talked to my husband about it, and he agreed with my wishes. John and I had often gone to my aunt's restaurant since we were dating. The food was so good that we often talked about how we wished she had more customers. When I told Rachel how I had renounced my inheritance, she spoke to me angrily. What? Why would you do such a thing without my consent? How should I pay off for my mansion? Your mansion? What are you talking about? I thought you already finished paying it off for the mansion. John asked Rachel. Rachel said vigorously, There's only a week left until the down payment is due. I've been waiting for your inheritance to come through. I could not forgive Rachel's statement that she had bought the mansion counting on the inheritance from my mother. What did you just say? Don't you dare mock my mother. Even if we get the inheritance, why should I pay for your mansion? I think this was the first time I had ever spoken back so strongly to my mother-in-law. I was so angry that I started to cry. Of course you should pay for my mansion because I am your mother. You wanted her inheritance so much from your mother that you neglected your own family and went to visit her, didn't you? Rachel retorted. What a horrible thing to say! I had no intention of that. My mother didn't wish for such thing anyways. Please, just leave. I was only worried about my mother and I never started the conversation of inheritance with my mother ever. Instead, I just wished and wanted my mother to live as long as possible. Coming to us for money is still fine, but my mother's legacy has nothing to do with Rachel. Hey, Mom! That is just so rude! Mariana didn't even have that kind of idea in her head! What did you do for Mariana's mother? You hardly even went to visit her. I'm very disappointed in you, Mother. Please go home already. We won't be supporting your living expenses at all from now on. As John said in a strong tone, You say such terrible things to your parents. You both are such horrible children. I'm leaving. After she said this, she left our home. After Rachel left, John said, I am sorry about my mother. I had no idea of what she was thinking. You don't have to worry about her. He said this as he apologizes. John later told me that because of Rachel's age, she has shortened the term of mortgage and agreed to a higher down payment price. Since from that day, Rachel contacted John every day to somehow lend her money, but he stubbornly refused. Since Rachel's demands were so insistent that John talked to his father Jeff about it, and when he did, Jeff and Rachel came to our house to apologize. Jeff had no idea what was going on. 
He knew that they were going to buy the mansion, but Jeff thought they were going to pay for it from their savings. Jeff also had no idea that John and I had been giving Rachel money for living expenses and that Rachel had been coming back to us more than we had already given. I was surprised to hear from Jeff that Rachel told Jeff that she is going to our house because since I am away from home to visit my mother in the hospital, Rachel will support us with the household chores, which she never did. Jeff said that he had left the money in management to Rachel and Jeff did not know how much money she had saved, but he was surprised to find that it was not even half of what he thought it was. When Jeff questioned Rachel, she confessed that she made poor choices in investment, which resulted her to lose some money. Jeff deeply apologized to John and I. Mariana, I apologize for my wife's rude behavior. I believe Rachel did the worst thing she could have done as an adult. We will take care of the money for the mansion, so please forget about it. I will make sure she will pay back the money you both have given her, even though it will be paid little by little over time. Rachel, you apologize to them too. I'm sorry. I will pay back. Rachel apologized in a small voice without the vigor she had shown the other day. I understand. If you apologized, it's all right, I said. Seeing my mother-in-law become smaller and smaller, I felt refreshed. In the end, Rachel didn't have the money for the down payment for the mansion, and she tried to get a new loan, but it was not approved. Since Rachel had already called in to move out of her current house and had no place, Rachel and Jeff decided to move into a smaller apartment with a lower rent. Rachel had been a stay-at-home mom and had never worked, but she started working part-time to pay us back. I took my family to Aunt Michelle's restaurant for dinner. Aunt Michelle told us that there was a piece of land available just around the corner, and she decided to build the new restaurant there. I will not renovate, but build the new restaurant at the new location so my regulars will be able to eat at my place every day, she said happily. She gave us a taste of the new dishes she plans to serve on the new menu after the relocation. After the relocation, Aunt Michelle will live in the house where my mother used to live. The new restaurant will be completed in a year. We are looking forward to it. Thank you so much. If anything happens to you guys, I will help you. You can count on me. She said this to us with a serious face. Her cooking is always delicious. It is the same taste I have had since I was a child. Katie and Patrick both like it and are very happy. I think my mother is smiling at us from heaven when we are eating and enjoying Aunt Michelle's food together as a family.